Hey Grace Kids, we're so excited to have you back. This is week two of our series, Wait For It, and we've been talking about Advent for three weeks now, which is waiting for the arrival of Jesus. So, how many days till Christmas? Can you guess? We have 12 days till Christmas. Whew, it's coming so fast, I'm so excited. I love Christmas. One of my favorite, favorite things about Christmas is Advent. Can you say that word with me? Advent. Have you heard of it before? We just talked about it really quick. We've been talking about it for the past three weeks. It means the arrival or coming, the celebrating of Jesus. And this whole time up to Christmas, we get to celebrate and wait for, wait for it, for Jesus. So the third candle, we've been talking about candles all the past couple weeks. We've been talking about all these different candles that represent different things that we light. Maybe you've seen your parents light them. The third candle is called the shepherd's candle. And this one symbolizes joy. We have joy because Jesus was born. The prophets, like we talked about last month, talked about Jesus and the people had waited and waited and waited for joy. Man, that would have felt so good once they knew what was happening. Once they knew that Jesus was here, Jesus was coming, they would have been filled with joy. So there's scripture in Luke 2, 8 to 11 that talks about the shepherds. And there are shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around, around them and they were terrified. Ooh, I'd be probably scared too out of my sleep. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Wow, maybe you've been helping your parents light the candles or you see the wreath at home. Now, one thing that we've been doing is, if you know, I'm a bit of a klutz and I can't, I misplace things all the time. This is a very true fact about myself. I misplaced the joy candle again. I'm really sorry. Okay, can you help me find it? I was like getting really excited. I got so excited. <gasps> we lost the T too. We gotta find that one. Okay, uh, do you see it? Have you yelled at me yet? I found it, okay. Our good friend, Hubert, that's what I'm gonna call him now. His name's Hubert. Hubert the astronaut had joy. Now, joy is the color pink because we are halfway to Christmas. So we'll hang that up on our tree. Now, my friends, we have so many fun things happening and we got some great things happening beyond just Sunday morning. So we are doing December 18th, we're doing a Zoom party. We invite you to come with us and we're going, well, come with us on Zoom and we're all gonna build forts and we're gonna huddle up around our computers, we're gonna watch a movie together, do a ton of fun activities, ask your parents to go on our website to sign up for it and it's gonna be so much fun. And if you sign up, we'll drop off a little sweet treat for you to enjoy the party with us. So yeah, we are gonna get into our lesson today and learn more about waiting for Jesus. Okay, now before we get into the lesson, we have a few games to play because we're talking all about board games and all that fun stuff. That's our theme. So before this, um, Emma and Austin both did a little bit of Pictionary that you guys are going to guess and see if you can guess what their drawings are. They had five seconds to draw this. Was it difficult? Yeah, it was okay. really hard. Okay, do you have, which one are you starting with? Okay, we'll start with that one first. All right, are you ready? These, they, they pertain to the Christmas story. Ready, set, go. Who do you think this is? Yell it out. Here, show each other. Show you guys again. I believe it's a angel. Angel. That looks like an angel. Okay. All right, yes. what's our next one? What do you got? You got that one? Perfect. Okay, ready, set, go. Who do you think it is? Show it to each other. Did you already yell it out? You probably did. You're so smart. Um, who do you think this is? Mine is beautiful. <laughs> I drew that one. That one looks pregnant. Yes. Is it Mary? I think so. It's Mary. Okay, this is the okay. last one. This one is probably my favorite. Okay. Okay. Ready, set, go. Who it is? Who it is? <laughs> yell it out. Yell it out. Okay. What do you think? It <laughs> this is Austin's best drawings. We really do love them. These are Emma's. Um, okay. Who do you think it is, Emma? Yell it out. 
Baby Jesus. Baby Jesus! That's right. Okay. One more story. One more story. One more game before we get into this. We're going to do a little bit of a pull. So at home, if you want to get off your couch and do some stretching, we're going to do some walking. So your pull is if we're basically, you're going to walk forward if this pertains to you. If you, because we're talking about change, we're talking about different things that, um, well, because we're talking about how the Savior changed everything, how baby Jesus changed everything. So we're going to talk about some things. Maybe there's some things you want to change. Uh, and if you want to change them, you're going to step straight up. You're going to take one step forward. We'll pretend to move because we can't really move. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Step forward. If you would cha change your height. I'm very small. Okay, step forward. If you would change how often you have to learn about math. Ooh, math is not my favorite subject. Okay. Step forward. If you would change the taste of Brussels sprouts. <laughs> um, probably. I actually like Brussels sprouts. Really? Yeah. Look at that. I like them with butter. They're pretty good with butter. Okay. Step forward. If you would change how long it takes to do homework. Yeah. Step forward. If you would change how many friends you have. I would always like to have more friends personally. So those, that poll is actually going to be on our Instagram too. If your parents have Instagram, be like, Hey, go vote on the polls because it's cool and fun. Pastor Shay will be like, oh. All right, so we're gonna get into our scripture and uh, we'll meet you there, let's go. All right, so today's story comes from John, right? Yeah. Is that what we're doing? If you have your Bible, feel free to flip it open to John. John chapter one. We're gonna go verse 19 to 25 is the first verses we're gonna look at. Take it away, Emma. All right, um, so the testimony of John the Baptist. Here we go. This was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders sent priests and temple assistants from Jerusalem to ask John, who are you? He came right out and said, I am not the Messiah. Well, then who are you? They asked, are you Elijah? No, he replied. Are you the prophet we were expecting? No. Then who are you? We need an answer for those who sent us. What do you have to say about yourself? John replied in the words of the prophet Isaiah, I am a voice shouting in the wilderness, clear the way for the Lord is coming. Then the Pharisees who had been sent asked him, if you aren't the Messiah or Elijah or the prophet, what right do you have to baptize? Hmm. So when we hear something that is hard to believe, we like to question it. After all, it is unbelievable, right? That was what these leaders did. When John explained to them who he was, they were like, what? But John made it very clear that he came to prepare the way for Jesus, for our Savior. So let's keep going, um, verses 26 to 28. John told them, I baptize with water, but right here in the crowd is someone you do not recognize. Though his ministry follows mine, I'm not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandals. This encounter took place in Bethany, an area east of the Jordan River, where John was baptizing. Man. So John knew that people would think he was important, but he was given a message that if the people just waited a little bit lo longer, if they just waited for it a little bit longer, that the true Messiah, the Savior, would come and change everything everything so the people in the story and us have something so much better on the way someone who will save everyone and spoiler alert john knows his very own cousin jesus was gonna be that someone he knew before anyone else knew now that gets us into our big idea can you show us our big idea there emma what do we got for today, whoop. today we have wait and see. The savior will change everything. Nice. So last week we learned everyone needs a savior. And this week, can you say it with us? Wait, wait and, and see. see. The savior will change everything. everything. Feel free to chuck it up on our board of things. We love it. All right. So we have even more scripture to get into. Man, it's such a scripture day. We love scripture. We love 
reading about Jesus and the story of Jesus. So we're getting to Psalms 126. Um, this is verses 1 to 3 and then 4 to 6. Let's go. Okay. When the Lord brought back his exiles to Jerusalem, it was like a dream. We were filled with laughter and we sang for joy. And the other nations said, what amazing things the Lord has done for them. Yes, the Lord has done amazing things for us. What joy. Wow. Guys, we talked about joy earlier. That's what we're celebrating and waiting for the joy of Jesus. So in Psalms 126, we get to read about God's faithfulness in keeping promises. Okay, do you know what the word faithfulness means? Do you guys know what the word faithfulness means? We had talked about this actually like last month. We talked about how we can be faithful like God is faithful. So keeping promises, that's being faithful, being loyal, being true. Those are all ways that describe faithfulness. Okay, so verse 3, that was the last one you read, said, The Lord has done amazing things for us. What joy, right? Something yeah. like that. What does God's faithfulness look like? To whom is God faithful? Um, I think he's faithful to his people. Has God been faithful to you? Oh, yeah. God's been faithful to me, too. And he sent his people. He told his people that Jesus was coming. And even though it took a really long time for it to happen and they had to wait for it, it happened. It was amazing. Okay, we're getting into verses 4 to 6. Let's go. Restore our fortunes, Lord, as streams renew the desert. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. They weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return with the harvest. Man. So verse 4 uses the word, whoop, see ya, the, uses the word restore. So restore means to bring something back to its original form. Do you think restoring something requires some change? What do you think? I think so. Yeah, it does. Can we trust God to bring change? Totally. He's bringing, he brought the Savior, he's going to bring Jesus again, and it's going to change the entire world. So, we, we can trust that God is going to bring change because God is faithful. Just wait and see, the Savior will change everything. Now, we have a bit of an object lesson that we're going to get into real quick that talks about this even more. So let's go do that. All right, so we're going to talk about how some things are worth the wait, like waiting for Jesus, worth the wait. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love plants. I have so many plants. Do you have plants? Yeah, love plants. Now, one thing about plants is they need some dirt. Do you got some dirt? I do. We have our plant holder here. Put some dirt in, just probably half that I feel like. There we go. Ooh, look at that. That's really sand, but that's okay. That's all the dirt we could find. Also, our, sp our special plant also has these lovely seeds. Look at these lovely seeds. I don't know if you can see them, but they are very colorful because they're beads. We're gonna plant our beads. Okay, we can probably put a little more dirt in because we need to sow it. It takes time, right? You gotta, you gotta do that. I don't know if you guys maybe had a garden this summer and your mom helped, got you to do some like weed picking and it takes time for things to grow. Now we need some water to get up in there. Now we're just gonna make mud basically. <laughs> so here we go. Look at that. Wow. Emma is a professional gardener, by the way. I don't know if you knew this, but she really is. So notice how it takes time of tending for a plant to grow. And when the change happens, it is sure worth it. So the seeds are planted and it's cold. It's dark soil. It's not that great looking, you know. Um, we don't always know what the outcome will be, but we plant with faith. The water, sunlight, and soil feed the seed to change everything about it. And here we can be reminded to wait and see the Savior will change everything. Now, do you guys want to see what a plant looks like when it's like really big and cool and like changed really nice? So this is what I would hope our plant turns out to be. There's a very good chance it won't turn out like this because we use plastic beads. Look at this, look at the growth. This, would you believe me if I told you that this plant probably started from a very small seed, but it took time to wait and see the change, just like we can wait and see that the Savior changes everything. Man, we are talking about how Jesus changes everything today, and we're going to reflect on a few things. I think I just, uh, let's just keep this plant here. It's so I nice. I like it. Yeah, it's a peace lily. So we talked about peace last week. So we can talk about 
all types of things about change, how maybe some people have changed the world during all of this. So which option to change the world is easier? Is it easier to change the world by loving people? Or is it easier to change the world by changing your socks? Which one's easier? To change the entire world. I feel like loving people. Because changing my socks only really affects me and please change your socks because they will get smelly and gross. Um, but we can love people and that can change the entire world. And another way that we can show people love, especially this Christmas season, is have you ever written a card before? I have. Do you like getting Christmas cards? I love it. So nice. Do you like giving Christmas cards? Yeah, even better. Even better, right? So we have this project. We are challenging you, Grace Kids, to create a really cool Christmas card and send it to one of the elders, one of the seniors in our church. Now, because some of them, you know, it's been long. They haven't seen a lot of people. They would love to receive a Christmas card from you. And again, on our website, you can sign up for that. And we would love to hook you up with an address to send them a really cool Christmas card. And I know you're super crafty and you're already thinking of a million ways to do this craft. Okay, we also have our memory verse. We talked about this last week. We talked about it a few times. Let's talk about our memory verse. I'm gonna give this to you really quick because this one has a memory verse on it. Awesome. So, what do we got? Give it to me. Okay. So, the memory verse for memory verse. this month. This month, yes. This whole month is Micah uh, 7, 7. 7, 7. But as for me, I watch and hope. For the Lord I wait. For God, my Savior, my God will hear me. My God will hear me. I love it. That'll be on our Instagram, so you can keep that in your heart and you can remember it. Maybe put it as a background on your iPad or something and see and remember this scripture as we wait on Jesus. Now, uh, do you want to go hang out with Carl? Yeah. We love hanging out with Carl. He's Let's so go fun. see what he's doing. Yeah. See you guys. Bye. Hi there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. And welcome to Grow, welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow. Hosted by Carl, where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to OTD. Ah, man, I just lost myself again at Operation. Ah, Carl, why are you so good? One day, man, I will... Oh, <laughs> hello. Uh, do you notice anything different about me? I'll let you look for a second. <laughs> Still nothing? All right, I'll give you a hint. It's on my head. Still nothing? Come on, y'all. Usually I part my hair to the right, but today I decided to part it to the left. Crazy, right? I'm surprised you guys even recognize me. This week, I started to realize how much things have really changed. I mean, think about it. Before, we used to drive it around in a car, sit in a restaurant, pay with money, order a pizza. But now, if you touch your phone in a certain way, pizza just shows up at your door. It's crazy. I mean, take a look at these photos. Here's a picture of a phone. We all know this phone, right? This is what they look like now. But they didn't always look like that. Check it out. That's what it used to look like. I could crush somebody with that. Okay, now everyone knows this is a washing machine, right? Where we put our nasty, stinky clothes after a long day. Well, here's what it used to look like. Weird, right? Looks like some sort of scary movie. Or what about this? Look at this big, shiny, fancy new car. Pretty cool, right? Well, this is what cars used to look like. This will take you two weeks just to get back and forth from the mailbox. Things sure have changed. Ah, Carl. Sam. Hey, I'm liking the new hair thing. Looks good. <laughs> hey, thanks. What are you up to, Sam? Not a whole lot. Just got done looking at those photos. Were those things weird? I guess I never thought about how much things we see every day change. You're right. Things change all the time. Kind of like your hair. <laughs> you know it. So Sam, can I ask you a question? Sure. Does God ever change? That's a good question, Carl. The answer is no. God does not change. The Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Really? That is so cool to know. What makes you ask that, Carl? Well, when I read the Bible, it's full of people and things that change. Then I wondered, does God ever change? You're right in saying that people and things change in the Bible. 
But God is different than anything or anyone. God is eternal. Eternal? It means to exist forever. Something that has no beginning or ending. Ha! <laughs> wow! I don't know if I've ever thought about it like that before. Yeah, you see, the Old Testament had a lot of change throughout its history, but there was a promise from God in it that was going to be the biggest change of all. And what was that? Well, remember last time we talked about John the Baptist, who was preparing the people for the Savior? Oh yeah, John! I bet people thought he was a Savior. That's exactly what some people thought. Well, didn't John tell them that he wasn't? It's like, I'm not the Savior, folks. <laughs> so easy. As a matter of fact, he did say that. But some of the religious leaders kept pressing him. They thought that John had to be the Savior because of what he was doing. And what was that? Baptizing people. He helped people decide to follow God and to repent. That means to know that you sin and to ask God to forgive you. The leaders were sure only the Savior or a great prophet like Elijah could do those things. But John was waiting for the real Savior, just like everyone else. Yup. So when people kept bugging him, he told them that they would know when the Savior came, because things would change a lot. See, that's why I don't get. Why would things change? Were things not good? Yeah. Their attitudes towards God and their worship towards God was not at all what God had in mind. All this time the people were waiting for a Savior, it seemed like they were slowly forgetting what the Savior was coming to save. What? Did they think that Jesus was going to save them from drowning? Didn't they know that the Savior was coming to save us from all our sin? Not really. The people of Israel had a very difficult history. They lived under some awful rulers from these other kingdoms. So they held on to the promise that God would send them a Savior, thinking it was going to get them out from these other governments. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, Jesus wasn't that kind of Savior. No, Jesus came and challenged people. The way they live, the way they love, he changed the way we can have a relationship with God forever. Wow, that is a lot of change. A lot of change. Change can be scary sometimes. But when it's Jesus that's changing things, then we have no reason to be afraid. Man, the people have no idea how much Jesus was going to rock their world. If I were John... I could see that. You have the hair for it. <laughs> right? If I were John, I would not have been able to hold it in about what Jesus was going to do once it came. I mean, if I was there, I would look at them and say, wait and see, the Savior <laughs> will change everything. Carl, that's our, wait for it, big idea. No, Sam! Today's big idea is, wait and see, the Savior will change everything. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. Wait and see, the Savior is going to change everything. I'm so happy that you're embracing change and moving past... Uh, Carl? Yeah? You've changed. How so? Never mind. See you next week, kiddos. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Road TV.